system, there uh, we will uh, go into how it has evolved since it has been added into 4.12 version release and how its use cases have evolved over time. So in it, in its early days, in the 2000s, the TE was mainly used for premium content protection or what we normally use as digital rights management or a DRM use case. So, and that has evolved over to mobile financial payments such as Samsung Pay or uh, that is backed by Samsung Knox. And now it has been proliferating to the PC world as well. So we have Microsoft ARM tablets which are already being deployed with firmware PPM that is based on a T uh, backed by the ARM plus more technology. So starting off, who am I? I'm a, I'm a senior software engineer with the Naro as a member of support and solutions engineering team. I have a keen interest uh, in platform security. And from the beginning of my career, uh, I have been involved in the platform security stuff. And I'm, the majority of that contribution has gone to the open source team ecosystem. And I have been a reviewer for the kernel G subsystem along with some of the prizes I have added to the kernel based on that uh, team like RBL, RNG and the trusted keys. Apart from that, I have contributed to trustedfirmware.org projects, um, platform and table part of the interest founder. And the other interest that I have is within the debugging and the toolchain. So I am a meta on toolchain their maintainer. I have written a trace for Opti from scratch. And apart from that, some contributions to the KGDB framework within the kernel. So I thought I should introduce myself. So this is my first Linux number. And uh, yeah, nice to meet you all. So starting off, what is the Essentially, it's a trusted execution environment. Where the trusted code is isolated from your rich operating system. You don't want your applications to be uh, available for the entire attack surface that uh, Linux has. So it is a rich environment. There are network ports available. There are various kind of attack surfaces that are available. So you want to separate your trusted code inside a secure environment, whether that isolation being guaranteed by various hardware technologies like ARM Plus Zone or AMD Secure Processor etc. And again, this T initiative, it has been backed by an industry standard that is from Global Platform T. I have uh, put here a link to the specs, so if you are interested, you could go through those specs. So essentially, we are isolating the memory and the devices or peripherals from the rich environment, and those are only accessible to the trusted execution environment at runtime. So you could switch your CPUs among the trusted environment and the rich environment. So this is the slide that I have uh, from the global platform defined system architecture. So this gives a generic overview of how a trusted execution looks like. So on the left hand side, you could see uh, the rich environment running normal applications and client applications and the regular Linux of OS. And on the right hand side, you could see the T itself. So that has trusted application and there is an isolation boundary. This isolation boundary is hardware specific, whether it's an ARM person or PMD, like your processor or any other boundary. So, and on the T side, you could see there is a parallel trusted OS that is running at runtime. And how do they communicate is by message passing among the D and the T. So this message passing, again, it's hardly defined. Like on ARM zone based systems, it's a secure monitor form. There you pass your uh, messages from the, uh, Linux to the trusted OS via those secure monitor form. Or it could be an IPC mechanism when a D is implemented as a sec uh, separate secure co-processor. So it can be IPC between your application processor and the T. 
So, and coming on to the peripherals, so there could be three categories of the peripherals. One could be the public peripherals that are available to the re environment only, and there are trusted peripherals that are available to the T. And the third category is the special one, where you have shared trusted peripherals. So, they have both modes of operation, like you have a crypto engine which have uh, one like one job ring available to the uh, trusted environment and the others available to the re environment so that that kind of peripheral can act as uh, a shared trusted peripheral and again we have the concept of shared memory where your host uh, rich environment side shared memory is visible to the trusted environment environment applications Now moving forward uh, to one of the open source uh, team implementation that is Opti. So it is an open source implementation with the mainline Linux kernel driver. So the supported architectures are ARM and ARM64. So now people have started using uh, adding uh, support for RISC-V as well. So it's early stages just booting Opti. And the main design goals for Opti is uh, to keep to provide the isolation that we talked about and uh, to have small footprints so that it's auditable and uh, it's certifiable that it's secure. And the third is portability. Uh, it's following the global platform T spec so that your trusted applications, when you write for uh, one T hardware based environment, it's portable to the another T as well. And you don't need to have the, the main aspect that Opti provides is you don't need to have your hardware available with you. You can use your emulated environment using Camu and the support is available there. So we have the ARM Trust Zone solution that is emulated using Camu and you don't need to have actual hardware to uh, play around with Opti. So I have uh, put here a link, uh, you could go through that. So just to give you a brief background about how the Opti does uh, is looks like doing boot. So uh, this is a generic picture uh, about how first starting off from the on chip boot ROM, uh, which loads and uh, passes on control to the second stage bootloader. And the second stage bootloader uh, is responsible for loading three components that is a rich bootloader, uh, the secure monitor firmware, and the trusted device itself. And then on uh, the control flow, you could see as picturized in the diagram. And uh, finally, uh, the rich bootloader would uh, load the Linux kernel itself. This is how the runtime looks like and how the communication is established. Here, you could see uh, within the kernel, you could see the T subsystem and the Opti driver. And uh, the communication mechanism, as I talked about, it's a secure monitor call in case of ARM trust zone, and it could be an IPC in case of AMD secure processor. So then on the user space side, there is a generic T API that is an IOCTAL interface that is exposed by the Linux kernel to the user space. And on top of that, we have the T client API. That's a library that is compliant with the global platform T spec. And on the secure world side, we have the T internal API. Again, that's a standardized API that is uh, so that your trusted applications are portable. We have two kinds of trusted applications here. One that is running in the secure user space, and the second is running within the uh, within the kernel within the kernel on the secure side. That is known as pseudo TA. So there may be some services that requires hardware access directly. So those kind of services could run in the secure kernel side as pseudo trusted applications. Now, the main focus of this presentation, the kernel T subsystem. So it got introduced in the Linux kernel version 4.12, uh, the T subsystem itself that provides registration and unregistration of T drivers. So there could be multiple implementations of the T. It could be an on-chip implementation and off-chip um, where you have a separate SOC, uh, although you could consider TPM as a T environment, but uh, that's again fixed. But what T is, it provides you the programmability. You could program your 
secure end site, uh, the trusted site. TPM is like a, a fixed uh, piece of hardware. You could have a programmable SOC that you could say it's a trusted execution environment. And uh, so what T provides you, you could have your own implementation uh, for the T driver. And you have the shared memory interface between the normal world and the secure world. And in the T subsystem, during its in, when it got uh, merged into the main line, we have the Opti driver, which targets ARM and ARM64. And it has shared memory support uh, via reserved memory. So basically a chunk of memory that is reserved to communicate among the secure world and the normal world. Now uh, we have AMD T driver as well in the upstream. And soon uh, people are looking for Qualcomm T driver uh, to be merged in upstream. So uh, looking from the aspect of communication, so how the communication is established among the T and the RE. So first of all, a context is initialized. Uh, this is the API that is standardized, T initialize and finalize context. So among the RE and the T, the second bit that is done is establishing a session. A session is among the client application and the trusted application. So the API for that is take open and close session. So this is basically context is among the whole re and the T and the session is particular to the trusted application and the client application. Then we have within the session, uh, we could invoke commands uh, using session as a reference and uh, invoke command is basically you call a function of the trusted application to execute and provide you some uh, results. Uh, say for example, you, you want to have uh, some access to the secure key, but it's not visible uh, to the re environment. You want to perform some operation using that secure key. That operation would be performed within the trusted application and you would get the results. So your secure key is not accessible to the re environment and it's only accessible to the T. So that's one kind of operation. There could be other secure operation which you want to perform in the T side. Now coming on to how memory is shared among both. So this is the bit that was earlier implemented as reserved shared memory where you have the buffers that are passed among the client and the trusted application. So this is the reserved memory area. There, if in case you have a pre-allocated client application memory, then it was like double copy. Uh, so it was first copied into the reserved memory and then uh, copied and copy it back to the client application. Uh, but now with the evolution, we have uh, this concept of a registered shared memory or dynamic memory where your allocated client application buffers uh, or kernel buffers, any, anything that could be registered with your trusted OS. So you just uh, split that into uh, pages and you uh, issue an AP uh, command to the trusted OS to register the pa those pages so that we, we can work on zero co copy concept and the client application memory would be available uh, visible to the trusted application uh, code. Now the sec second evolution that happened uh, was to provide the in kernel API. So there, there are many various subsystems within the kernel like RNG, crypto or storage that, that want secure storage, that want uh, the backend to be a T so that uh, like your secure keys, you don't want the kernel to access that, uh, access those and you want operations to be performed by the T on kernel's behalf. So those kind of services uh, can be provided by the in kernel API and uh, it could directly communicate uh, with the T is the Kernel, kernel subsystem. So the exported APIs are listed here in this slide. So now we have the exported APIs, but how uh, the drivers would be probed, probed for a particular trusted application. So then we came up with this concept of T bus so that uh, when you have the T is available in the T, then the driver should be automatically probed for those devices. So uh, for that concept, we introduced this T bus in the kernel and uh, it would it 
the concept is basically the driver registers a table of UUIDs uh, that is corresponding uh, to multiple TAs. So a driver could support multiple TAs and uh, it registers a table with the T bus. And when, whenever a trusted application becomes available on the T side, it would be, uh, it would basically, the, uh, the drivers or the T implementation would register that device on the bus and if that UUID for that trusted application matches any of the driver UUID table, then on the corresponding driver would be probed. So the APIs that are provided by the TBUS framework are match and U event. U event is basically to auto load uh, the TBUS drivers whenever uh, the trusted applications become available. Now, uh, since uh, the T, uh, this device enumeration is very much specific to a particular T. Say for example, we have Opti, because uh, whether a device is available or not, or uh, whether a trusted application is available or not, it depends on the corresponding implementation. And in case of Opti, we have a pseudo TA, that is again, a secure kernel service within the Opti and uh, it provides you the list of UUIDs that are present uh, on the T side. So that could be enumerated or that could be provided to the T bus as devices. And uh, so uh, during probe for the Opti driver, it enumerates all the trusted applications which could act as a backend for the kernel drivers and registers on the T bus and thereby the corresponding drivers are probed. So currently, Opti allows uh, enumeration for pseudo and early TAs. So early TAs are just basically user space TAs which are bundled into the trusted OS image. That's why they are called early because we need them at the boot time. Now coming on to the use cases. So first of all, the hardware RNG use case. So there, there could be cases uh, where on a SOC you have a single entropy source and uh, both of the worlds want to access that. And because your secure world uh, uh, is the higher privileged one and it wants the complete access of that, it don't want, uh, you don't want the V world to basically exploit that uh, entropy source. So in that case, uh, the access to the entropy source can be moderated via this uh, T environment, via this hardware RNG pseudo TA. So the entropy source is only available to the T and the kernel could uh, use that entropy source via this hardware RNG pseudo TA. And uh, in this case, we have this T ha hardware RNG driver within the kernel and the pseudo TA uh, is enumerated on the T bus and uh, then the service is accessible as normal hardware RNG TA. The second use case that is currently upstream that is about trusted keys. So in case of trusted keys, so earlier it used to be only TPM based. Uh, and when I started looking at that use case, so it was basically uh, sealing your uh, keys with the TPM rooted uh, super root key. So the uh, super SRK key is only accessible to the TPM, not outside. In similar, man in sim similar manner, Opti has a concept of hardware unique key that is particular to, to the hardware only, and that's not accessible to the V environment. And uh, we can use that hardware unique key within the T uh, to, to provide this use case of trusted keys so that kernel is not uh, aware about this hardware unique key, just uh, uses uh, this trusted T driver to seal and unseal keys uh, using that hardware unique key that is only accessible to the T. It is uh, on the similar principle like SRK is available to the TPM only and here hardware unique key is available to the T. And rest of the user space looks similar as for a TPM. The third use case is the firmware TPM. 
So from the TPN with regards to Opti, it's basically a trusted application. And uh, it works transparently with the TSS stack. So it is basically uh, visible to the user space as slash dev uh, TPM zero. And um, you could uh, just perform the similar operation that you would do with the regular hardware TPM. So this is based on the Microsoft implementation for firmware TPM as a trusted application. And uh, that is basically a software uh, TPM imp implementation and micro Microsoft implemented as a trusted application that is based on Opti. And there is already a Linux kernel FTPM driver upstream uh, that is using that. Uh, you could, I have uh, provided the link here. You could uh, refer that. The another interesting use case is uh, this PKCS hash 11 token, uh, where the, uh, normally the PKCS hash 11 is like a like crypto interface to the user space that is exposing services for various kinds of tokens. That's, that token could be a secure element or it could be a hardware TPM device. Similarly, Opti, uh, the trusted execution environment, could also present a token for the PKCS 11, and uh, the standard user space stack would work transparently with that. So in case of uh, Opti, uh, we provide this PKCS hash 11 uh, trusted application that is part of the um, open source Opti project. And similarly, on the user space side, there is another library that is sitting on top of a T client API that is called libckt uh, that is providing you the PKCS interface of, towards the T. And uh, your uh, normal PKCS tool or client applications, they would work transparently as they would work with other tokens. Uh, so they would work with similarly with the PKCS H11 trusted application. Now, coming on to the future use case, this is something that I want to discuss here, or uh, brainstorm here about the kernel runtime measurements. A step towards tamper-proof runtime environment for trusted worthy, trustworthy systems. So currently we have a static uh, root of trust, like we, we do the secure boot or we do the launch time uh, secure boot, uh, but we don't have a solution for runtime uh, kernel memory attestation or me measuring the kernel memory at runtime. So there is a need for that because uh, there are, it is possible to modify your kernel code or the text section at runtime as well. Uh, say for example, you have done the secure boot during boot time, but it doesn't provide you the guarantee that it would the kernel memory or the text section would behave as it, uh, as uh, done during the secure boot verification. So what I'm proposing here is for the kernel runtime measurements. There, there have been some prior research on uh, this topic, like the Linux kernel integrated measurement or kernel integrated measuring system based on trust zone. So it's basically measuring the runtime kernel memory. So I have just took this uh, one of the research paper and how uh, they are uh, trying to propose this solution. One is, so what they are saying is uh, you have the kernel and the modules, executable files, and you have the baseliner. So you have uh, good values for your kernel and the modules. And when the kernel is at runtime, there is a measure or uh, you measure the kernel memory at the runtime and you compare those values with the ground truth. And then you decide whether any uh, kind of, uh, whether any kind of uh, unintended, unintended attack has been carried on onto the kernel or not. So that's done by the LKIM appraiser. So this is an example uh, which was done by the research. So how uh, T could play an important role here? So T can act as a dynamic root of trust uh, for measurement, such that uh, the attestation key that is 
only accessible uh, to the secure world. So uh, the re, the kernel, because kernel here is what we are trying to attest, or kernel memory we are trying to attest. So we don't trust the kernel itself. And the kernel memory can be registered dynamically as we uh, discussed earlier for measurements with the trusted execution trusted execution environment and currently we already have something called as a remote attestation uh, service that is running provided by the opti that is done for the trusted os memory itself and the trusted applications memory as well so we are measuring the runtime memories for the trusted applications as well and we are signing that and providing a proof at runtime and similarly, what I'm proposing here is for the kernel memory as well. So in this case, uh, they, there is a possible possibility of replay attacks as well. So to counter that, we added a nonce so that whenever a new signature is generated, that is a different one from the prior one. And now the question comes here, which kernel portions should we measure? The first one is the self. So the driver within the kernel that is providing an interface to the T that should be attested firstly so that we could trust the measurements that kernel driver is working correctly. Then there could be kernel text section, read only data section or any uh, module specific uh, text section or read only sections. And there are also critical data structures within the kernel. Uh, it could be security subsystem related or modules related. And there are also architecture specific code and data sections and there could be others that i may miss uh, in this in this list so for this purpose this is the rough kind of initial draft which i had in mind how the interface would look like so the kernel t communication agent could just register a static list of kernel memory ranges basically uh, it would be start symbol and the end symbol for a particular section uh, with the T. So the T has access to the kernel memory, all of it, whichever uh, you want to measure. And then uh, how you can trigger a measurement, uh, you could just uh, pro provide an updated nonce uh, to this uh, security FS T file system and trigger a measurement at runtime. And then uh, using this, uh, you could fetch the measurements using uh, a cat on this particular file. And uh, and lastly, this attestation public key, this is important. So it needs to be done only during device provisioning. So you can't trust uh, at runtime the device provisioning key. So at, uh, at, at the at the device provisioning time, you need to fetch that uh, so that you could trust and you could use that for the verification. So here, uh, if you see at the measurements list, you, you would see start and end symbol and then hash and the sign, signature of hash plus nonce. So every time the signature would be new whenever you trigger a measurement again. But question comes here, this could be expensive at runtime and uh, your uh, CPUs uh, could be very constrained uh, to do that at runtime. So what could be done to uh, counter that is a random measurements. Uh, you may want uh, to reduce uh, that measurement, uh, measurement effort so using random measurements. You could measure, say for example, some, some, some memory within the kernel and next time you could measure another range so in order to do, do that, what I, what I thought is uh, to provide the user space, the flexibility to provide the list of sections that they want to measure. So there is a system.map file that could be useful here, which provides you the list of symbols, kernel symbols, uh, if you want to measure that. So this is the second uh, stage of the proposal uh, and I, we could modify uh, the proposal with this measure range as well. So you could echo the particular symbol range which, wa which you want to measure. And uh, based on that, uh, you would fetch the corresponding measurement list. 
Now coming on to the threat model uh, for this proposal. And uh, first attack vector uh, could be a man in the middle. So say for example, uh, they were, because we don't trust kernel, we, we say uh, there is a malware sitting within the kernel that is trying to say, uh, this is uh, the attestation which I have done. But how do we counter that as is that attestation key is secured by the T so that it's only accessible to the trusted execution environment and not outside. Secondly, the replay attack, uh, as we talked about the nonce. So five minutes left. Yeah. Okay. Secondly, uh, the nonce, uh, which provides you the guarantee to avoid on the replay attacks uh, so that you generate the signature uh, every time the signature is new one. And lastly, uh, since we don't trust the kernel, the kernel T communication agent itself can be compromised because this communication agent is providing the symbol range from which should be measured. And it's very much possible or, uh, or a very complicated attack could uh, do create duplicate memories. Uh, say, for example, you are not executing that particular kernel, but your communication agent has created a duplicate map for that and uh, do the measurement on, on that basis and provide uh, the remote entity a confidence that this is correct. Uh, to counter that, first of all, we would measure the kernel T communication agent as well. And secondly, uh, there could be random kernel memory measurement so, so that it's difficult to carry such an attack uh, so that uh, there isn't a static list and at runtime your remote entity could verify any particular uh, memory region of the kernel. So that's all I had. And uh, lastly, a few thoughts. Let's champion the open source T ecosystem. So there are already downstream T solution and uh, because of the security or whether the co companies don't want to upstream the T solution, but uh, now nowadays it's gaining traction to do open source T solution. So we should reduce the maintenance burden for the downstream T solution. And secondly, uh, the future work that I think for this is proposing an RFC uh, for the kernel runtime payments. And if you have any other interesting T use cases, I'm happy to discuss that. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Hi. Thanks for this presentation. Um, so I don't think it's very useful to um, to index to the, the the symbol map. I think that. Ultimately, you need to uh, measure specific parts of the kernel, and if you're passing this off to a verifier who is going to produce some attestation results, that part really needs to know far more. It, it's not it's not interesting to know from symbol X to symbol Y. It, it 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 really needs to know what it was. In particular, the you can also include the address, the physical address, of that you're measuring within your signature. And probably the nonce also has to come from the verifier over the network um, for that. So uh, I think that you're better off just to I think keep it simple, stupid is probably the right answer. And don't try to don't try to involve more pieces than you than you need to have. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Keep it dynamic. That makes more sense. So for what it's worth, uh, there's an RFC in OPT that already does that, and it's based on exactly what you requested. So there's no symbols, there's nothing. It's, it's a basically dumb API that says, here's the starting physical address, here's the length, go measure that, right? Okay, okay. And the point is that you can't measure the entire kernel, obviously, because there's jump tables. The, the kernel basically changed the assembly that it runs at runtime when it, once it boots. So initially, we thought about doing this before we jump to the, we start executing the kernel, right? But that's, that's basically undoable nowadays. Uh, so we need to figure out, you know, portions of the kernel that we have to measure and that's that's doable. Yeah, yeah. Right, Dr. Jens, he, yeah, we have yeah. an RC on that. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, I would be happy to look at that. Yeah. So I actually have a question of threat model because I'm I'm not sure I fully understand it. So so you seem to so your threat model is that you want to measure the parts of a kernel to make sure that if there has been some modifications in the memory, you detect that. But you're using the component for measuring which resides in a kernel itself. So if I'm already able to get a right primitive into kernel memory, 
So how do you kind of protect from the, I, I mean, the kernel side is already under my control as an attacker. So measuring some parts of a kernel at that point is just kind of, you know, it's, I'm going to jump the other way. Okay, so you are uh, talking about uh, whether, so from the beginning, uh, like the kernel communication agent is compromised, right? Uh, yeah, so, so it can be compromised at any point of time because yeah. it, it's a runtime memory. So if Absolutely. I go to write primitive into kernel memory, so I, I'm able to mount an attack. And, and from our security point of view, people, we consider from that point on write primitive in a kernel, the kernel is under my control. So uh, it, this concept is based on top of secure boots. So from the starting point, so your kernel is verified during boot. Mm -hmm. So you could at least trust uh, during boot mm -hmm. that uh, it, it's a verified kernel. And then uh, at runtime, uh, your kernel communication agent, as I explained earlier, that's an attack vector here. So the last one, um, if that's compromised, because we don't trust the kernel at all, because that's the entity we, which we are measuring. So how we can mitigate that uh, is based. So the second uh, mitigation is for the random measurements. Say for example, uh, you have uh, like man in the middle, like uh, what you uh, explained like, is doing the random measurements? So it's the remote entity, which is providing uh, you the addresses yeah, yeah but who's going to provide say okay the measurement for this part of the memory is you know hash this so who's going to do the actual measurement in the machine so it's uh here this interface just provides you oh, this interface just provides you the hash right but that's under, that's under kernel control so kernel does kernel doesn't do any verification by itself it's just providing you the hash. Yeah, the but hash can be faked. Yeah, that could change. That could change. And the remote entity has a ground truth. Yeah, but I can provide you the ground truth if I'm an attacker. So yeah, I'm that's sure. why, because the signature is from TEE. So the T has the attestation key. And uh, but, that can't be used by the kernel to create its own signature. But when the T has to measure, it can't yeah. be the kernel. Itself. Yeah, it's the T. Yeah, that's why I described it. One right agent. Yeah, here. So the Linux kernel memory is registered dynamically with the T and the T is the one that is measuring the kernel memory. So it's, it's providing you the hash and a signature on top of that. Okay, so the agent, the agent in the kernel is... No, no, agent is just like providing the kernel symbols or the addresses to the T. Uh, which has to be made. Okay, so it doesn't do the measurement. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think that we have to finish. Uh, we have a break. Uh, we will uh, rest out at 20 past 12. But before we wrap up, uh, Michal want to mention one session which is not which is related to our session. So uh, my colleagues from uh, Google, Jonathan Zank and Ron Minnick, will give a Birds of Feathers presentation about. Uh, uh, Linux at Power Reset, uh, status, challenges, and opportunities. Or they will uh, talk a little bit about uh, core boot Linux boot approach of putting Linux kernel inside the firmware and booting the Linux kernel as fast as possible on the platform. So um, feel free to uh, attend the, 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 this presentation. It will be held at the uh, 5 p.m. at the uh, meeting uh, six room, I believe. Feel free to come. Thank you. <laughs>